the law of love, no matter under what circumstances, always meets everything and everybody with love. All great teachers of humanity have always had their teachings based on love. They loved human beings, and they taught human beings how to love. People usually see in those teachings only the emotional, the altruistic, the ideal, yet how few realize the immense practical value and the real science back of them. Let us analyze now, from the scientific point of view, why the continual application of that law is one of the most important means for our evolution. We have an immutable law which says everything is vibration, and therefore love also is a certain kind of vibration. But so is hatred, jealousy, etc. Suppose an individual sends to us a negative thought vibration of hatred or jealousy. That unit of negative vibrations penetrates into us, and because of the law of vibration, arouses in us the corresponding unit of negative vibrations. Having in us two units of negative vibrations, we feel uncomfortable, and we throw them back to the individual who first sent to us the thought of hatred or jealousy. Again because of the law of vibration, they arouse in that individual two corresponding negative vibrations. He in his turn, disliking to feel four units of negative thought vibrating within him, throws them back at us. Receiving this time four negative units, which arouse within us a corresponding four, we send hack eight. He gets eight and sends hack to us sixteen. We, on our side, return him thirty-two, etc. The number of units of negative vibrations exchanged increasing thus in geometrical progression. When both sides have reached the limit of endurance in that direction they explode. That is, they suddenly throw off all the negative vibrations accumulated in each one of them, and that explosion means fight. The fight may he with acts, with words, with looks, or even with thoughts. In any case, it is a fight which results in injury to both sides. That is the ordinary way, among human beings, of eliminating their negative vibrations. Certainly not a practical way, after all because it always weakens both parties and sometimes injures them beyond repair. That proves that retaliation, as stated in the Law of Moses, which says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and which is so generally accepted by human beings, is not the best method of solving that problem. Now, whenever we apply the Law of Love in a similar case, we obtain their entirely different results. An individual may send to us negative vibrations, thoughts of hatred and jealousy. According to the law of vibration, they will arouse in us the corresponding negative vibrations. Yet if we remember the law of love, we can meet those negative vibrations with love, consciously brought forth within us, as the positive always destroys the negative, which has no power over it. The positive vibrations always destroy the negative vibrations sent from that individual. After they have destroyed these negative vibrations, they reach the individual himself and arouse within him the corresponding vibrations of love. Though surprised at the way we retaliated, the individual may send us another discharge of negative vibrations, which we meet again in the same way. And again the positive vibrations of love proceeding from us will do their pacifying work within the other individual. He may send a few more discharges of negative vibrations, the number of which will depend on the strength of the negative passion which is governing him at that time. But we, meeting them always with love, finally destroy all the reserves of the negative vibrations which the individual possesses at that moment, and the individual because of the law of love, begins to feel in their stead peace and harmony, and sometimes even love. All the negative seems as if wiped out and replaced by the positive. Often the individual, out of stubbornness, does not want to admit it, because he thinks that by so doing he acknowledges defeat. But in reality there was no defeat whatsoever on either side. On the contrary, 
love carried the victory to both. LD above cited example shows how infinitely superior and more practical is love than retaliation, yet how few people realize its practicability and its universal use. They consider it a weakness, a lack of manliness, not to strike back when they are struck. On the contrary, it is much more difficult and requires greater self-control and more developed willpower to stand those continual attacks of negative vibrations and to meet and overcome them by vibrations of love. The more we apply that law of love in our lives, the stronger we become on our positive side and the greater is the harmony within us until finally we reach a condition of such harmony that no negative vibration of any kind can ever touch us more because there is no longer in us a response to anything negative. Then only everything positive will come to us. Each human being will someday have to learn that law of love, because it is the only way, the quickest and the easiest, to do away with wars, revolutions, strikes, domestic troubles, and all kinds of disagreements and misunderstandings among human beings. Then peace will be established on this earth, not as something imposed from without by a stronger nation but as something from within, an inherent part of each human being. And as nations are made up of individuals, when the individual will be able to express peace and goodwill toward other men, nations will then manifest on a large scale what each citizen does on a small scale. Then the whole human family will be at peace, and peace will reign on this earth. How true, how scientific. Ring down to us through the centuries those loving words of the one who was love. Love your enemies. Bless them that hate you. Do good to them that despitefully use you. Those who have attained the highest on the path of love, when they reach that condition where nothing but love comes to them from everywhere and from everybody, are then ready for the final test of love. Jealousy, hatred, malice, all evil passions, are thrown at them again, but this time not to awaken within them the corresponding characteristics which no longer vibrate within them. All negative, all evil, comes to them for liberation from its own self for transmutation into good. The life energy, pure and harmonious, imprisoned as in a shell in every negative act, thought, or emotion, is irresistibly attracted toward those who are the luminaries of love. Unconsciously it feels that only they are great enough to pierce with the arrows of iron fire. Love that negative shell around it, to liberate it and thus transmute evil into good. There is no higher and greater work to perform on this plane than the transmutation of evil into good, and those who are able to do it justly deserve to be called the saviors of the world. It is usually with their lives that they pay the price for that transmutation for that service they render to humanity. But is there an effort too great, a price too high, to pay for the liberation of humanity from the bonds of evil? Human hatred, jealousy, and all the other evil passions, like a great wave, lifted Jesus to the cross. As a deadly arrow, they transfixed the human body of Krishna and caused his mortal self to die. They persecuted Buddha, and every other lesser teacher who ever taught humanity the law of love. As in the days of old, so in modern times the same fact repeats itself. It is the age-old evil which comes continually for liberation from its own negative qualities. And love, gentle yet strong, presses to its heart those thorny branches of evil, and with its warmth, its tenderness, makes them burst forth into beautiful blossoms of love. The law of evolution, that saving ray of the great law, expresses itself on the three planes, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. When on the spiritual plane, it appears as eternal unfoldment. When seen through the physical or mental lens, its evolution reaction is called progress. The wind which whirls the dust from the ground, and carries it up into the air, is governed by that law. It proceeds in spirals. 
the spiral being the form through which the law operates. The cyclone on dry land, the typhoon on the sea, are governed by the same law. Whenever left to themselves to operate normally, all vibrations tend naturally to rise upward. It is only through conscious or unconscious perversion that this upward tendency can be reversed. Evil itself is nothing but the reversed upward movement of good. Positive vibrations, whenever reversed in their ever ascending and unfolding course, become negative and assume then all those characteristics which are called evil. If it were not for the law of evolution, the laws of rhythm and polarity would have kept humanity in their clutches eternally. Yet no matter how much those laws, especially the law of rhythm, try to throw us back to the point from which we started, they do not succeed because of that law of evolution. There is always a little gain on the side of the positive, due to the continual operation of that eternal helpmate of ours. We call it hope, as it always carries us beyond our own human selves, remains with us, sustains and uplifts us, when everything else seems to have deserted us. It is like the last string of that great lyre called human life, which, when the rest are broken, still strikes into our hearts new courage to continue the struggle and to win our fight. Being a law and an eternal one, it is not only hope that the law of evolution brings to us, but also the assurance that no matter what may happen, success and are ours eventually. Lesson 5. How many laws govern the universe in the absolute? One universal, all-inclusive law called the Great Law. 3. How many laws govern this world in the present state of human consciousness? Seven laws of which three are immutable, eternal, laws of the absolute, and four are transitory, mutable, laws of the relative. Three. Why are there three laws of the absolute? Because of the triune state of the present human consciousness, through which the one universal great law appears in three aspects. Four. What are the three laws of the absolute? First, a life, mind, Truth, love, spirit, is all in all. Second, the same law governs always everything, everywhere, in the same way, from the greatest star down to the smallest electron. Third, everything is vibration. Five, what does the first of the laws of the absolute mean? It means the allness of the great principle. Six, what does the second of the laws of the Absolute stand for? It stands for the universality of the Great Law. 7. What does the third of the laws of the Absolute mean? It means infinite and eternal activity. 8. What attitude has one to take in regard to those laws of the Absolute? One has to attune, to harmonize, oneself with them. 9. What practical result does that bring? An ever-increasing sense of freedom and actual power. 10. What results are brought about by the transgression of those laws? Disharmony and loss of all power. 11. Are those laws of the absolute inferior to the great principle itself? No. Because they are an integral part of the great principle, and are the means by which it governs the universe. 12. What are the four laws of the relative? They are the laws of polarity, of rhythm, of gender, and of cause and effect. 13. Why are they called transitory laws? Because they were brought into existence by mind, Lucifer, himself, and must therefore be also destroyed by mind. 14. How did they first come into existence? Mind, Lucifer, claiming to be a power by himself, constituted a seeming power aside from all power. Thus was the law of polarity brought into existence. Out of the law of polarity grew all the other laws of the relative. 15. What power have those laws nowadays? They rule humanity with a rod of iron and try to stop all progress. 16. What attitude should one have towards those laws? 
one should learn how to master them. 17. What will be the practical result of mastering those laws? Freedom, power, and dominion over all. 18. By what means can that be achieved? By actually living the laws of the absolute. Their power will overcome all the limitations imposed by the laws of the relative. 19. How does the law of polarity read? Everything in this world in the present state of human consciousness appears to have two poles, the positive and negative poles. 20. What does the law of polarity mean? It means perpetual disharmony due to the continual fight of the two principles, the positive and the negative. 21. How does one overcome it? By always casting one's weight in the scale of the positive. 22. How can one enforce positive statements by backing them up with the following words? With the help of God or with the help of the great law? 23. Why are those words so powerful? Because neither God nor his great law have any opposites. 24. Has the negative any power over the positive? In reality it has not, because of its non-existence. But in the present state of human consciousness it has to the extent that one concedes that power to it. 25. Why has the negative such power over human beings? because they believe in it and utterly fear it. 26. How can that power be destroyed? First, by discovering it. Second, by knowing that it is not dangerous. And finally, by realizing that it has no existence or root in the absolute. 27. What statement did Krishna make about the law of polarity? That God is above it. 28. What was the comment of Jesus concerning it? That the law of God is the only power. 29. Why is it difficult to keep a secret? Because of the law of polarity. 30. Why is there an inevitable reaction to each action? Because of the law of polarity. 31. What are the causes of indecision? The law of polarity. 32. How does the law of rhythm read? Everything in this world in the present state of human consciousness inhales and exhales, goes up and down by compensated oscillations. 33. What is the operation of the law of rhythm on the largest known scale? In the progress and retrogression of humanity. 34. How does it affect individual nations? They rise and fall, to rise and fall again, repeatedly until they have learned how to overcome that law. 35. How does the law affect individuals? By bringing into their life periods of success, alternating with periods of failure. 36. How can that law be overcome in individual life? By taking all possible advantages of its ascending forward movement, and by being determined not to be carried away during its backward and downward movement. 37. Should one keep to the matter one has on hand, even through the backward movement of the law of rhythm? Yes, but one should carefully avoid starting anything new during that period, as it is bound to be a failure. 38. What is the best general attitude during the backward movement of the law of rhythm? Optimism, coupled with increased activity. 39. What changes are brought about in one's life by mastering the law of rhythm? Success without periodical failures. 40. Have those who have achieved success in their life mastered the law of rhythm? Yes. 41. Does the law of rhythm manifest itself also on the physical plane? Yes. Throughout all nature, its operation is especially noticeable in a body of water during a storm. 42. What does the biblical story of the dream of the Pharaoh, about the seven cows, explained by Joseph, refer to, to the law of rhythm? 43. What is the law of gender, an aspect of the law of polarity? 44. How does it read? Everything in this world in the present state of human consciousness has two genders, 
The male and female gender. 43. How does it operate? Through the influence of one gender upon the other. 46. What is the real purpose of marriage? The building up of character by mutual development of the complementary characteristics. 47. According to the law of gender, what are human beings? They are half individuals who seek completion through marriage. 48. Do men and women already possess, in a latent state, their complementary qualities? Yes. Each man possesses latent female qualities, and each woman latent male qualities. 49. What happens to two individuals who have worked out their mutual completion? They become independent, strong, and more loving because of their inner completion. 50. Which is the easiest way to work out that completion? Through marriage based on mutual love. 51. If the love is on one side only, can the problem of completion be worked out? Yes, but with much greater difficulty. 52. What chance for completion have those who married only for worldly considerations? Known whatsoever. Therefore the sooner they part, the better it is for them. 53. Is completion worked out in some other way? Yes, in general through association with other individuals, be it men or women. Does it also affect children? Yes, that is why co-education is desirable. 55. How does the law of gender express itself through the human mind? Through the self-consciousness, the male, and the subconsciousness, the female of the human mind. 56. Does every individual, be it man or woman, have the two genders in their respective minds? Yes. 57. What is the law of cause and effect and how does it read? Every effect has its cause and every cause has its effect. 58. Has the law of cause and effect any connection with the laws of the absolute? Yes. It has its roots in the absolute. But, cause and effect being instantaneous and simultaneous there, its operation is entirely different from its mode of expression as a transitory law. 59. Why does it express itself differently as a transitory law? Because of our present limited concept of time and space. 60. How does that law affect human beings? It shapes their destiny. 61. Can man himself change his destiny? Yes, by continually starting positive causes which will culminate in positive effects. 6-2. Has one control over the past and the future? Known over the past, all over the future. 6-3. Of what use is the past? It stands as a lesson to us for the present. 6-4. Which is the most important time on which to center all one's thoughts and energies? The ever-present now. 6-5. Why is that now so important? Because it stands for the absolute, which includes in itself the past, present, and future. 66. What actions does one continually perform in the ever-present now? One reaps the past and sows the future. 67. Can the effect of a cause once started be avoided? No. The law itself prevents it. 68. What is the operation of the law of cause and effect in what is called reincarnation? In their successive reincarnations, human beings reap the effects of causes they started in previous ones. 69. Does that explain why some human beings are born with all kinds of limitations, and others with all advantages, some to suffer, others to enjoy? Yes. It is all due to the operation of the law of cause and effect which follows human beings through their successive lives and exacts from them the last farthing. 70. Can prayer modify the operation of that law? No. There is no pleading with the law. But prayer can give one strength to start positive causes in spite of negative effects and thus change the future. 71. How did Jesus formulate that law? 
with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. 73. What are the practical advantages of the knowledge of that law? It does away with worries by enabling one to control one's future in starting positive causes, which because of that law are bound to culminate in corresponding positive effects. 73. Is the cycle of the seven laws closed by that law of cause and effect? Yes. 74. What is the law of love and the law of evolution? Two divine rays of the great law sent down to earth to help humanity. 75. How does the law of love read? No matter under what circumstances, always meet everything and everybody with love. 76. What is the practical advantage of that law? It destroys the negative and strengthens the positive as well within as without the individual who uses it. 77. Can it overcome all negative? Yes, because love is that infinite, universal power which has no equal. Love is both the law and the fulfillment of the law. 78. Why does the negative still come to those who have risen to the highest in the positive? Because in those instances it seeks transmutation, release from its own negative condition, which can be achieved only through the law of love. 79. What is the law of evolution? It is the last string of the great lyre of human life, and is also called hope. How does it read? All vibrations tend to rise upward in the scale of eternal harmony. 81. What is its practical value in human life? It always lifts those who are fallen, and gives hope to those who are discouraged. Being a ray of the great law, it continually opposes itself to the operation of the law of polarity and rhythm, and thus counteracts, in a certain measure, their negative effects. 82. What is evil? Evil is the negation of the law of evolution. It is the reverse, backward movement of positive vibrations.